Good evening, everybody. Can I extend a warm welcome back to Balamani High School this evening? It's brilliant to have so many of you join us for our information evening. We would love for this to be in person, but with COVID still causing significant disruption in our school and community, we leave it best to remain online for the immediate future. The purpose of tonight is to bring you up to speed with some of the systems and processes that pupils have already started or will undertake this year in Balmany High School. When I spoke to you uh, in June, I mentioned that we had a lot to share with you and it was a case of working out what to hold back so as not to overload you. So hopefully tonight we'll be able to piece together a few of the gaps. After my introduction, uh, our Vice Principal, Mr. Watson, is going to talk through our assessment for learning process. Two of our key coordinators, Mrs. Barr, Mrs. Nesbitt will focus on numeracy and literacy. We then have a, a special appearance from one of our now year nine pupils, Darcy McCain, who's going to tell us a bit about her time in year eight. Mrs. Blair, our head of year eight and senior teacher in charge of student support will then fill in any gaps that you have missed. So partnership is something that's really important to us and you'll probably see this message in this type of slide a few times over the next five years, but I make no apology for it. It emphasizes the fact that school, home, and pupils need to work together for the best possible outcomes for the pupil. And most importantly, that the pupils of the school are not alone. There's always somewhere to turn. The great thing about this school is that there's always so much taking place. It would be impossible for me to share everything uh, with you, but I want to highlight a few critical dates. We have three assessment windows across the year. This is, allows us to track progress, identify and address gaps in knowledge, and intervene with pastoral support if outside circumstances are impacting pupil achievement. Assessment one is from the 8th to the 12th of November. A progress report will then follow this and you'll get an opportunity to chat to teachers on the 7th of December. These meetings will take place on our school cloud system. This is a website that allows you to make bookings during a set time uh, window during the late afternoon and evening. The meetings will essentially be like a Zoom or FaceTime conversation. Assessment two is just after the February half term and the final assessment at the end of May. A much more detailed report with written comments will be produced at that stage. The final date that we have is our annual prize day. The Friday before half term is our traditional day of celebrating pupil achievement. If we're allowed to hold this in person, year eight will not be required to attend school on that day. If we do have to return to a virtual show, then school will run as normal. Can I thank you again for joining me? I'm now going to hand over to Mr. Watson. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Mr. Bingham. And good evening, year eights and year eight parents. My name is Mr. Watson and I'm acting vice principal. The first thing I'd like to do is congratulate everyone, pupils, parents and staff, for how well you've managed the transition from primary school. Despite the circumstances, the September restart has gone great, with everyone adapting to the new routines. Good work. My role this evening is to discuss, or take some time to discuss assessment and how it should look over the course of this year. Assessment is important. And I want you to draw your attention to the triangle above and on the screen to think about why it is important. Assessment allows us as teachers to evaluate two areas, our teaching as well as the learning that has taken place. This is important to ensure that we get it right for both the learners and the teachers. Assessment also offers an opportunity for learning for the pupils. Practically, over the course of this year, assessment will be ongoing in classes. Sometimes there will be periods where there might be more and periods where there might be less. Periods where there are formal assessments and periods where they are less formal. At this point in your child's school career, here at Balmany High School, there are lots of assessments in different forms. In terms of formal assessments, there are a variety of ways a child may be assessed from written tasks, to performance-based assessments, to standardised tests. As a school, we spread these across the year in, a, in an attempt to monitor progression. 
asset, assessment feedback is something that we value at Ballymoney High School. Something as a staff we've been working on to assist your child in achieving their potential. We want our assessments to be worthwhile. Our, aims, our aim with assessments is to be able to take a snapshot of where your child is at a point in time and see how that can compare with another point in their educational journey, identifying potential barriers to success and doing our best to help remove these. At Balmany High School, we have three formal assessment windows in November, February and June. As a staff, we set individualised targets based on their standardised test scores, feedback from primary schools, as well as teachers' professional judgment. These scores allow our staff to be able to set realistic, achievable targets for your child with a view to challenging your child to achieve their best in a particular subject. These targets are reviewed and adapted as we learn more about your children. We use a RAG system in Balamani High School. This is a system where you can tell quite simply by looking at a child's report whether they are above, below or on their targets. Red standing for below target, yellow for on target and green for above target. The example on screen shows a typical example of what you might see in June. Three assessments across the year with targets set. In this example, targets haven't changed an awful lot across the year, but it gives you an idea. Pupils deemed to be within 5% either side of their target percentage are deemed to be on target. It can make it easier for parents and heads of year or form teachers to get a general feel for how well a pupil is doing with a quick glance down through the range of colours. An addition to reports in recent years is the inclusion of class averages. These averages are worked out based on all the pupils working at that level in the school. This might be one class studying a particular area of a subject or could be four different classes all studying the same topics. These averages give us an idea of where a pupil is, is compared to their class and can be useful for identifying pupils who are per perceived to be underachieving. By the end of the year, we will have a raft of data on your child. Information from standardised tests, information from three assessments and a knowledge from personal experience. We use this data to re review how each child is progressing. Pupil profiles help us to compare data and can highlight a pupil who isn't achieving in line with what his or her scores would suggest. Following review of these, we will either praise pupils through our credit system and rewards or look to put in place interventions to ensure that we can do better next time. Feedback is something I've already talked about. Acting on feedback and learning from what you've done are key parts to a growth mindset. We have a section in our homework diaries where pupils will have time given over for them to complete. This section allows the pupil to see an overview of their performance, but also allows them an opportunity to set smart targets to improve. Specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, time-based targets. We encourage you as a parent to get involved with your child and have a nosy to see what your child is thinking in terms of how they could do better. These sheets are normally completed the week after pupils receive their assessment results. When signing your child's diary, why not have a look to see what I'm talking about? The format in your child's diary is something similar to what's on, on the screen and allows pupils to look at their achievement and reflect on what they can do better. We encourage your, your children to be specific rather than simply revise more, talk about revising a specific part of a subject more, or how they would revise more. Perhaps even talking more specifically about how, how they can revise better. Hopefully what I've said gives you a brief insight into the, head, the year ahead in terms of assessments. I'm now going to hand over to our numeracy coordinator and head of MAS, Mrs Barr, who's going to pass on some information on how you as parents can make the difference to your children's learning, as well as give a bit of an insight into some of what strategies they'll be using in MAS. Thank you for your time. Hello everyone, 
my name is Mrs Barr. I am Head of Maths as well as Numeracy Coordinator here at Balmany High School. It is lovely to be able to speak to you this way at this difficult time. We have developed a whole school numeracy policy in conjunction with the Balmany Learning Community, which details procedures and practices for staff to follow and we are hoping to share this with more of our feeder primary schools this year. Each year pupils are tested online um, through CAT or PTM tests to show value added and to identify areas that they need to focus on. Numeracy is focused on in many units of work and in many subjects across the curriculum, as well of course Numeracy is focused on in many units of work across the curriculum, as well as in maths classes. In form time, fun numeracy activities are completed. Here is an example of a display produced by a form class in science, finding interesting and weird element facts. Other examples of numeracy in science. Examples from French, modern foreign languages. An example from our Learning Support Centre. Examples from PE. Examples from Home Economics and examples from music. How can you help your child with numeracy or maths? Always encourage them to show their work and out, show their methods, write it down. Practice the methods, look at the questions, work out the answers and then check if it's correct. We encourage the look, cover, write, check, say technique, although we put it and each teacher will put it in a slightly different way. We encourage checking of all um, numeracy work. How can you help your child with numeracy and maths in a practical way, in an everyday way? So shopping, buy one, get one free, two for one, working out the prices of things, weighing and baking, recipes and ratios, estimation, reading timetables, playing games and problem solving, Fractions, decimals and percentages, as well as numbers, appear in lots of different places. Route planning, visualising, day trip planning, all to do with cost and financial capability is a really important part of maths and numeracy. So how can you help your child revise? Reread the examples in your work. Revise using the worksheets, tests, exams or homework set. Ask somebody. Ask your maths teacher use the internet. There are tons of wonderful apps and online resources. We also encourage the use of My Maths and all our year eights will be trained on this shortly. It is really important that all pupils can use a calculator, a scientific calculator, as they prepare for GCSE. So we encourage all pupils across the school to bring a scientific calculator to class every day. Thank you. Hello, my name is Mrs Nesbitt and I am responsible for whole school literacy. First of all, in my presentation, I'd like us to consider why is literacy important? Well, there is a strong link between literacy and wider communication skills, and these provide the vital underpinning of a young person's ability to be employed. As much of the evidence shows, literacy is a vital factor in a young person's ability to gain employment and to thrive in the workplace. So how do parents help their child develop literacy skills? Many parents want to support their teenagers with literacy, but they're not sure what the best way to do this is. Some advice includes engaging in conversation, offer a literacy rich environment, and being a strong model for reading. Another feature that can help families now is technology. 
It meets the literacy needs of their children, and parents should talk with their children about using technology in creative ways. These talks can boost language development and build background knowledge and help your teenager develop other useful skills. The school has a number of technological tools that will assist pupils and parents with literacy. They are all accessed through our school G Suite. Fluency Tutor, RAIQ and Read and Write help pupils to develop independence in reading, spelling, grammar and writing. As a school we are focusing on RAIQ and Fluency Tutor. Fluency Tutor will help pupils develop their reading skills and it will help them develop their pronunciation and fluency in reading. Its key benefit though is that it helps the pupils be self-directed in improving their fluency and so is ideal for independent home study and distance learning. RIQ gives meaningful feedback to pupils and this helps pupils improve their writing skills and the quality of their work. RIQ also increases pupil confidence and attainment in writing. Pupils can track how long they have been writing for before taking a pause or stopping, and this is called a writing burst. Positive nudge notifications prompt them to do a little better every day. Instructions can be found on YouTube and we hope to offer parents further training later in the year, so watch out for that. In summary, literacy is important for our pupils' confidence and employability and we are focusing this year on improving our pupils' literacy through RIQ and Fluency Tutor. Thank you for listening. Good evening. I'm Mrs Hennessy, Senior Teacher in Charge of Learning and Teaching across the school. I'm going to speak to you a little about the importance of homework. Here at Ballamoney High School, homework is monitored regularly and checked by senior teachers. We know that homework teaches us to work independently by consolidating the work that is learned in class. Homework is always meaningful and reflects the work being taught in class. It encourages pupils to take initiative and responsibility for their learning and it helps develop self-discipline as a learner. It also helps to identify any learning issues that have not been picked up and in class. In our homeschool partnership, homework allows parents to have an active role in their child's education and helps them to evaluate their child's progress regularly. Homework may be slightly different from primary school. Rather than having literacy and numeracy homework tasks almost every night, you'll find that it'll be one homework per subject per week, or perhaps every two weeks. Homework is set in class and recorded in our homework diary. Homework is written in for the day it is due, but we encourage pupils to complete homework the night that they get it, to allow time to seek help or advice from their teachers in school if they are having any problems or any difficulties. Pupils should tick the homework off when completed. The homework diary is an excellent communication tool between home and school, and we encourage you as parents and carers to use the diary to correspond with the form or subject teacher. Homework diaries are checked by form teachers and or heads of year once a week. Why we expect to see, sorry, where we expect to see that you as parents are signing the homework diary at the end of each week. Homework comes in many different forms, like written, research, reading, learning, drama and or music pieces, to name a few types. And since COVID, a lot of homework has moved to Google Classroom. Pupils will be asked to do written homework by hand and upload pictures of their work to Google Classroom for their work to be marked by teachers and feedback given in the form of www, what went well, and EBI, even better if. By now, your child will have received a code to join each of their subjects on Google Classroom and should be able to access their homework and other subject materials 
in their virtual classroom. For help and support with Google Classroom, please refer to the homepage of the school website. There you'll find a green box which is linked to YouTube where you can access Google Classroom guides. There is a detention system in place for pupils who continually miss homework deadlines. Subject teachers will select no homework on Sims when homework isn't completed on time. And parents will be notified through the Parents Sims app if a pupil were to receive an after school detention due to accumulating a number of no homework. We're here to help and support your child with their learning and homework. Please get in contact with the school if you have any questions or concerns. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Darcy and I'm here tonight to help you put your minds at ease about your sons and daughters going into year eight. I was in their position this time last year. I know it can be a stressful time and not just for us, but for all the parents too. I just wanted to give you a few tips about things that helped me and my friends settle in to, to, into life at the big school. It was a really big change. The main thing I remember is how much more I had to take in. The work is challenging, but very rewarding. I feel I've progressed very well in year eight, or so my report said. It all takes time. That would be my main piece of advice. Be patient. The teachers here are really friendly and take their time to know everyone. They are very understanding and approachable. Remember, they were first years two at a time. Even Mr. Bingham and Mr. Watson, hard to believe, I know. Year eights even have their own playground. They get all the best treatment. I know Mr. Hargy didn't slip me a fiver to say this. It was, Mrs. it was Mrs. Blair that gave me a box of cupcakes. Anyway, there are lots of people looking after us in Bellamoney High. So don't worry, the school day is very busy. I got, into good, I got into a good habit of checking my homework diary every night and packing my bag with the books I needed for the next day. This saves you carrying around a, a huge school bag and helps keep you organized. Preparation is key. Making new friends and getting bullied were worries that I had before. Coming here, not forgetting, getting lost, my advice would be to get involved in the clubs and activities at lunchtime. I made lots of new friends by going to these. We can go to, to the hub at lunch or our, or our own chat and chill club exclusively for year eights on Monday. Lunchtime out at mobile five. The library is exclusive for year eights on Monday too. All year eight pupils have peer mentors. That was a big help. To help. See what I mean? Year eight's get, getting the best treatment. My advice about exams would be to prepare early. We set targets in all our subjects and these help us stay on track. There's much more I could talk about. I know we have a lot to squeeze in tonight. You've all been sitting long enough. A final thought would be, don't worry. The stress and worry will decrease and routines will become familiar habits. Just think this time next year, your son or daughter may well be standing up here advising the next group of year eights. Thank you for listening and I hope you, you enjoy the rest of your evening. Good evening, my name is Mrs. Blair and I'm head of year eight along with Mr. Hargate. I want to talk to you very briefly about study skills as a school, we want to foster in our year eights an ethos of consistency and effective home study skills. This will not only support our year eights with homeworks and school related projects, but will also provide a structure to support revision and assessments. <clears throat> this slide provides an example of a home study timetable. This is a very useful means of organising home study and year eights will be working on this in tutorial classes during the week. A home study timetable can ensure that a sensible balance is being struck between schoolwork and other important extracurricular activities. It is extremely important that sufficient time is being set aside in the afternoon or early evening to complete all homework. 
As a school, we depend on your support to ensure Year 8s are completing the, all their homeworks. This has become even more important now that most, if not all, of the homeworks are sent via Google Classroom. I would also like to mention at this point the importance of our school website, especially ahead of each assessment window. Pupils and parents can access the revision lists for each of their subjects at exam time on the school website. Home study is a key part of your child's education. It should be worthwhile and rewarding. It should not be a cause of stress or anxiety. No child in year eight should go home feeling stressed or anxious about their homework or indeed exam revision. Always know that they have their form tutors and their heads of year to go to if they are ever concerned. And likewise, if you have any concerns as parents, please do not hesitate to contact us through the school office. So, effective home study is all about ensuring your child has the correct learning environment and we are all familiar with the most obvious kinds of distractions. It will be impossible for year eights to complete homeworks to a good standard if a phone is beeping every few minutes with a Snapchat or Instagram notification. So we really emphasise the importance of a quiet and suitable space for home study. Somewhere there is plenty of space and minimal distractions would be ideal. I'll now pass you over to Miss Logan, who is going to tell you about our peer mentor programme. Good evening, I'm Mrs Logan and I'm a teacher in charge of Student Voice. Um, here at Ballamoney High School, um, Student Voice, children have many opportunities to get involved um, and one that will um, impact your son or daughter um, in year eight will be is the peer mentors. These are year 11 children who will go into the classrooms um, on a Monday morning and will have five or six year eight children who they will buddy. Um, the kids, um, the year eight pupils will be um, used to the system of buddy system from primary school and hopefully this connection with a senior pupil will um, give them some reassurance, will settle anxieties and um, will give them a bit of confidence to be able to speak to someone about um, little issues that perhaps uh, may arise in the first few weeks. The buddies um, or peer mentors as we call them in school will also um, make a connection with your children in on a Friday um, lunchtime in the year eight playground. There they will have a little bit le uh, more informal time um, arrange a few games, make sure they've got somebody to talk to, make sure that they're playing and um, are joining in uh, with um, other things that are going on in the playground. And again, therefore, uh, any um, anxieties or any little problems that may be arising that they, your child is um, maybe a little bit shy about bringing to um, a teacher or to a head of year. Um, this has worked really well for us um, in the past and um, we're really looking forward to seeing is this um, scheme blossom and your children benefit from it. Thank you. Folks, that's uh, all that we have to share with you for this evening. I hope you found it useful uh, and that there'll be things that you can take away and help um, your son or daughter with over the course of this year. Um, thank you once again for sending your children to us. and. Um, as always, we're available on the phone uh, or via the email system, so please do get in touch if you have any questions or queries. Good night.